During the pause, we had the opportunity to talk about TDK, their team comp, and how they would be or how they would eventually win the game. We did not have the opportunity to jump over to the other side of things, look at enemy and what win conditions they had as a team, because we saw them make a fair number of moves directly after that pause to claw their way back into it. Yeah. They had an opportunity to win a clean game. They did not do that. It was a very messy win. Uh, but to your question, yeah, they had the lack of wave clear, but you can make up for that when you have kill pressure on multiple lanes. And with LeBlanc and Aurelia, there, were, there was no one on the map that was fed enough to deal with them. Aurelia doesn't actually need to get that far ahead of Rumble or anyone on that team to be able to be a legitimate split push threat. Uh, and that's basically what they were doing. It took them time because they didn't have wave clearing them because they were sloppy, but that was, those were their win conditions and they accomplished it early. Yeah, and if you pull somebody into that lane like the Oriana or like the Rumble, it's like, well, you need that piece in the team fight to win the team fight. You need that large portion of damage to actually fight that other four member yeah. so if he was able to do that it's successful and you saw that a couple times where tdk was torn they're like do we fight five man at baron do we risk that or do we at least deal with flares bottom and they kept choosing we need to stay together as a composition and they kept giving up turrets off of that yeah, those big moves that we saw were things like the Aurelia TP bottom securing a kill onto the Thresh, the Bard roam mid picking up a kill onto Bishu there. You know, those mm -hmm. few kills were what kind of gave them that gold, those small leads that they needed in the, on the right uh, personnel in order to then set up the pressure that <laughs> we saw late. And, you know, that's, and that's the next step. And I think that is, you know, it's kind of the common theme when we've talked about uh, games with the, uh, you know, sub-squad of TDK is that the difference between them and these, uh, you know, full stable rosters is that communication, is their ability to make a decision about whether or not they should be fighting for that Baron or committing everyone to the other lane to try and take care of that Aurelia. Uh, you may hopefully, given the fact that they have been prepping and scrimming with their main squad when they return, it will be something that they can do. Yeah, uh, they're not too far behind these teams. Like if we look at all of their losses, there were glimmers of hope in every game. Kez has been able to get off pretty much first blood double kills in two yep. of their four games. There's usually somebody on their team that's ahead in the matches. But yeah, the team cohesion is lacking. And you can't, you can't expect team cohesion out of these guys. They just weren't able to pull far enough ahead individually to win any games. Well, here's the thing. The, the sub squad has performed incredibly. And I do believe that if this roster stayed for the duration of the split, that they, the, they would improve dramatically, even without the other two returning. And that we would see them begin to contend really seriously four wins against, you know, that, the bottom to middle, middle tier of the LCS. Now, that isn't going to happen. Uh, what I do want to look at, though, is uh, one, of our one of the fights that we had in the game. We're going to go about 39 minutes into the game. This is actually a fight that TDK won, but it pretty accurately represents what yeah. we were discussing before in the way that TDK wanted to approach fights. Yeah. Everybody's hyping up Bard right now. And this is the Bard play, but it's the misplay here because he's going to hit Latman with his ultimate, and it's going to stun him up for 2.5 seconds. And that actually just gives everybody a reposition chance because Inox walks up to Latman as if he's going to burst him and then he doesn't have the opportunity to. You're going to see it right there after that. Inox is in position. He's like, oh, wait, I'm ready to burst. And it's like, wait, no. Yeah, it's like the Great Bard bait because yep. they still yeah, want to kill Latman. But the other thing that's coming out of Stasis is the turret. So basically, Trashy dies to the turret in order to kill Latman. And that trade really wasn't worth it because they'd already taken a bunch of damage from the Shockwave and Aurelia had been killed beforehand. This is part of the sloppiness that enemy didn't want to face. When their split pusher gets put, uh, killed off, they needed to not be at that turret and even more so not commit to a turret dive. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody pressuring on the bard play. Leave body drop alone, man. Let him play his game. And one of the big aspects of that too was the grouping up that it forced enemy to do there in trying to kill that man. You f Oriana layered on top, and then the fact that Sejuani had built a Leandris at that point. Man, seven right? one and Kev, seven. So, you were talking about yeah, gold on the right people. Exactly. I don't know if that's uh, what No, no that game. might not be where you want the gold, right but the point is that the gold was spent into damage there. So the diversity in the damage was at least spread out a, bit, a little bit. It made it tougher yeah. for target selection on the side of enemy. Kez played his heart out. Yeah. Like that's, that is what you do if you want to carry on Sejuani. You build yeah. tank items and then a Leandris. It's, it's like that jungle Jarvan who's like, yeah. I'm going to build Hydra this game because I got to carry everybody in because I got all the kills early. But like, that's the thing. Like, I, I, I hate like, moving to another thing, but like, move, the way that he gives up kills in games because he knows that his team's going to carry him is something I think a lot of junglers need to pick up.
Probably not Kez right now. Yeah. Because he's just got to play his heart out, like you said. Quite possibly a learning point for the future. But again, have to establish how valiantly the sub squad for TDK has played over the past couple weeks. Congratulations to Enemy on that win. They are coming up. Team Dignitas will try to continue their climb up the standings when they face off against Team 8. The action continues after this. <laughs> this is this is the game. This oh, is yeah. the ga game where we don't we don't lose at five minutes, but lose at seven minutes. <laughs> say something like that. Asher lands an Otter flash box. The flay into landed as well. Otter flashes out, but Kez is right here. Lands the Q. Doesn't oh! land the Otter. Nice. Front line, front line, front line. Okay. I'm on Ash. Just front line. Front line. There Rumble, 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 Nice, nice, nice. Keep going, keep going. Ash, I'm not Nice, nice, nice. Smoothie getting caught out right there. Kez also going to get rooted up by Inox, and that's going to be a two man bar. They'll do the cards this fight out. Chasing, 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 chasing. Go, go, go. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Look good, look good. Speed up, speed up, speed up. Slow. Nice. Chasing, still chasing. Back up, back up, back up, back up. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Nice. Nice.